first and foremost, uh, everyone who's here, thank you so much. I know this is a bit late, but related happy 2024 <laughs> to everyone here. Okay. So what you'll notice is that we've enabled a couple of things. The first one is the chat function, uh, which might be useful uh, when we ask you a question, you know, uh, drop a comment and so on and so forth. Feel, feel free to use the, the chat function for that one. Uh, if you have a question though, please use the, the button uh, beside it, which is the Q&A button, okay? Now we don't know how many questions are gonna come through and so on and so forth, but uh, we will try our very best to answer as many as we possibly can. We might pause in between the presentation to take a few if um, the question and answers are already building up. Okay, um, let's see, uh, I get control of this, right? All right. Okay, so, there are, I guess there are two types of uh, groups of people here today. The, the folks that already know uh, IBF Careers Connect and uh, the, the folks that don't know IBF Careers Connect. Um, again, for, for, for starters, just to make sure your chat function is working. Huh? Uh, how many of you guys already know or don't know us? Feel free to put it in the, in, into, the chat, uh, into the chat box right now uh, as I go through this slide. Yeah, as I go through this slide. Okay, give me a second. I pick a bit, a bit slow. Okay, so what does IVF Careers Connect do? So we are a career center, obviously, right? Uh, and our playground, I like to say, is the financial services space. Now. Okay, so what do we do? We don't do we don't do things that are too different from other career centers, right? Um, but we do them within a very specific uh, area or niche. Yeah? So um, we do skills and competencies inventories, like what you see on the slide right now. What's that mean? So for example, if you're an early careerist and you're a bit lost, you don't know what to do in life, you don't know what where to go and so on and so forth, entirely lost, we probably will have an inventory that we can use for you to help you get a bit more focus and clarity. We can probably do that for mid-careerists as well. Uh, and the next thing is uh, job search skills, obviously, labor market uh, and job trends, um, both of which we will be covering a bit of today in our presentation. Uh, the fourth one is a connect with other professionals. For those of you who have uh, journey with us already. You may have already joined some of our networking events, which we organized. Last year, we had quite a number uh, mm -hmm. where we either go to the banks or the banks come to us and we do a nice networking session uh, to so that you get some airtime with uh, hiring managers and so on and so forth. And of course, the last one is, I guess, an overall statement, right? Action planning to enhance employability. Look at where you are now in your career. Uh, look at which is which which processes are working well for you, which may not be working well for you, share our thoughts, uh, and and you know try to improve those things which we feel might might need a bit more work lah. Right. So Lionel is here today with me. Uh, I've been hogging the space. Uh, Lionel, do you want to say anything? Did I miss anything? Anything you want to add? Uh, I just realized that some yeah. quite a few people are very new to to us. You know, so okay. I you know we we also you know all this can be done on a one to one basis. So I think somewhere down the road the slide there will be a screen where you could scan it and then make an appointment to see any one of us so that we can have a one-to-one -one chat with, with you guys, right? To Great. about any of those things that was uh, listed by Adrian. Yes. And so um, that will happen at the end of the deck. Mm -hmm. And um, before I, I talk about Fantastic Four, uh, I just <laughs> want to give an, uh, a, a brief summary again of the, the purpose of this session. So this is the first session that we're running for the year 2024. And what this session aims to do is to give a broad overview of the elements and things that you should think about uh, as you are planning your career or as you are planning your to execute your career strategy this year. So if you follow us uh, in our events page, again, at toward the end of the slide that you'll see, uh, we will dive deep into many of the things that we're going to be talking about today. But because of the time, uh, the time constraint, we can't go deep into any one thing. But this should kind of like start you off in terms of your thinking and so on and so forth and reframing your mindset and so on and so forth. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I just I just want to say, uh, just put it out there. Um, the chat function, this this session is a G-rated session, general. So let's keep everything friendly and nice. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's encourage each other. Uh, if you have anything that you want to say or you want to share as we're talking, any any examples or, or thoughts that you might have, please, please feel free um, to do so. Okay, so um, for the people who have journeyed with us before, uh, you, may, you may see this whole uh, theme of Fantastic Four before. 
um, for those Marvel Marvel fans out there, uh, you know, joining us today, when you think about a Fantastic Four, what what are they? I mean, feel free again to use the chat function, right? As I explain it to the 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 the, the rest of the people, the Fantastic Four in the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe is a family or group of four individuals, superpowered individuals. Each of them have a specific role to play, right? So from left to right, you, you see the thing, he's very strong. You see the human torch, he's very hot. Then uh, Sue Storm, the lady, she's uh, invisible. And then the last one is Mr. Elastic. And he's, as the name implies, very elastic, right? So each of them have a very specific skill set. It's a very specific superpower, okay? And then together, they form this, this team called the Fantastic Four. They fight evil, they overcome challenges and things and so forth. All right. So uh, in the career universe, the career universe, we, we have, well, we believe there's a, another, uh, you know, Fantastic Four kind of uh, equivalent, right? The first one is your resume or your CV. We'll use it interchangeably, resume, CV, okay? The next one is your ability to research the market, okay? The third one is your ability to network with people. And last but not least, um, your ability to interview well, okay? Um, I just want to say that th this is not exhaustive. You know, people might argue, no, it's just five, the six, and so on and so forth. But I think primarily there are these four elements, which if you get it right, maximizes your chance of career success. And remember, I'm, I'm choosing my words very carefully. Maximizes your chance of career success, not guarantees you getting a job, okay? So it maximizes your chance of getting uh, career success, okay? So each of this has its own superpower. The thing, the thing, uh, the one, the, the guy on the Fantastic Four, the one on the left, wouldn't be so effective if he wasn't very strong. The human torch wouldn't be so effective if he wasn't very hot, okay? Right? And so on and so forth. So each of these elements, resume, research, networking, and interview must be, must be the best of what they are supposed to do, lah, right? And then together, hopefully that will give you uh, as I said, maximize your career success. Okay? All right, so there you go. Now, um, for, for the people who, who have experienced Fantastic Four already, um, this year we try to enhance it a little bit by plugging these four elements into three dimensions. And these three dimensions, I, I believe, controls most of, most of, all, of all of our lives, you know, uh, in terms of any situation that you find yourself into, right? So, for example, um, there's the self. There's one dimension, the self. What is the self? The self is me, mm. myself. What can I control, right? Who am I? And things like this. And Lionel will talk about it in, in a bit, right? So the self uh, is, is one uh, first element, which is very, very important. But then opposite to the self is the whole dimension of the others. The people who, uh, who are outside of you, you can't really control. You can control the self, but you can't control others. Right, And of course, we cannot uh, ignore the fact that technology is uh, very, very important as well. Now, if you look at the Fantastic Four and you look at these three dimensions, this is what we believe you can come up with. Right, The self affects each of these elements. Okay, The self, your resume, your research, your ability to network, your ability to interview. So the importance of the self is uh, paramount. That's number one. When you think about the others, uh, the people that you can't control, now you will be um, encountering these people or these situations, for example, when you network or when you talk to people mm -hmm. or when you're interviewing, right? So whoever sits on the other side of the desk, there's no, there's, there's very little you can control. So you have to recognize that this is a, di a very important dimension as well, right? And then the last but not least, technology. Nowadays, we know you have ATS that's screening your resume. You have chat GPT, Gen AI, how do I how do I use that to, to to help me in my job search? Or how do I use that to 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 write a resume even? Or how how do I use that to do some research and so on and so forth? So this year, what we want to do is that the, the Fantastic Four has always existed, but now we want mm -hmm. to just reframe it into three dimensions. And in three dimensions, you can maybe relate to it. So I I, I just thought of an example. So my son is a is 12. He's going to take PSLE. Right? My son, he's 12, he's taking PSLE. So the self. Me, as a dad, um, I can control certain things. But others, which is him, I can't really control. I can I can try my best to affect it. I can try my best to steer him. But there's not much 
I can do in technology. He either uses technology for betterment or he plays Pokemon Go every single day. I don't know. So there's, there's good and there's bad, right? So many things in our lives will come down to these three dimensions. If you think about things as well, I think that, you know, whatever situation that you're thinking of right now, you can probably fit these elements yourself, other people, and the effect of technology, for example. Okay? All right. Okay, so uh, we start with the self. I'm going to hand it over to Lionel um, to walk through uh, walk through uh, this. Lionel, just tell me when to, to, to click the slide, okay? Okay, well, as I speak, you just click as fine because I think okay. the speed of it is right. So basically, self. Self basically is, is I, right? And it comes into play because everything, as you, if you notice, all of them comes into play. So what you're going to do when before you start your job search is you know, who am I? Or what am I, or basically what am I all about? So what are my values? What are my interests? How's my personality? Before that, the last but not least is what are the skills that I could offer? So before we start any job search, this is something that what we call a self-awareness study. You need to know more about yourself, right? So that your values, your interests, personality, and the skills will fit the others, right? So for example, different stage in your life, you know, your obligations are different. So that also affect the type of roles that you're going to apply for, the type of companies that you're going to engage in with the others. So for example, if you're a fresh grad, you know, your obligation in life may not be you know, to look after your kids. I mean, I'm, I'm just generalizing, of course, because usually when you're fresh out of school, you don't have uh, that type of family obligation. However, if you're a mid-career switcher, you could, this comes into picture because if you were to switch to something else, you got to remember there's certain people in your life, you know, that you need to take care of. You know, there's certain expenses, certain things, finances that you need, you're obliged to, to do. So you got to know which one comes first, right? You know, so when it comes to this job search, one of the things that we really encourage is make it a group activity. Don't make it a self in a sense that, you know, have some support. You know, discuss with your spouse, your loved one, things that you want to do. Because without the support, uh, it's going to be really tough, right? So last is we see, why do you put the thing last? Because once you can understand, you know, what are my values, what are my obligations, you know, how's my personalities and what's my interest, then you kind of decide, so what are the skills that I do have now that I can use, whether within my speciality or if not, what we call adjacent opportunities will be, you know, if I'm a customer service person, can I go into sales? Or, or if I'm a data analytic person, uh, can I go into software engineering? So that's where, you know, you could do, if you're self-aware of yourself, you'll be able to align yourself with your career aspiration, align yourself with the roles out there, and then you will find that your job search will be much clearer and much more focused. I totally agree. I just want to also add, right, that if you get this right, now I know that uh, talking about this stuff, it sounds like a philosophical why, yeah. but actually mm -hmm. it's very, very important. Um, why? Because if you, like what Lionel say, if you know yourself, your obligations, and so on and so forth, right, you will be able to mount a impenetrable defense when it comes to an interview. I guarantee you, because when you are so clear about who you are, what your skills are, why you're applying for this job, uh, and so on and so forth, right? There is really no interview question. The soft, the soft interview questions are that can, that can knock you down because yeah. you you you've already done this self awareness thing already, mm -hmm. right? Why you you are an MD? Why are you applying for this VP? Oh, because mm -hmm. it's a different stage in my life. I got married quite late. I got young kids, and so on and so forth. So you need to know your circumstances and yourself. If you know this well, uh, nobody can touch you. I mean, yeah. To be honest, right? Uh, yeah. So when it comes to all these motivational soft skills thing, right, or questions, open ended questions, you will be able to mount a very strong defense. Basically, I don't think there's any interview question that you can't overcome. Yeah, again, uh, amen to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So feel right. feel free again. Uh, for for the people, uh, feel free to use the chat function Q and A. If there's any questions, we will start collating them. We we'll start trying to answer them as we go. Sorry to hijack. Lionel, next one. No problem. Yeah, that's, okay, that's, next, yeah, next that's one, huh? good. Next one. Okay. So okay. So as we said, yeah. self is very important because it captures everything about yourself. You know your experience. Everything goes onto your resume, you know, your experience, your knowledge, yeah. and things, right? The latest information, your research, 
you need to know how where 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 do I go to find all this latest information, right? Mm. Next will be yeah. um, how do I reach the people of my network, right? So again, yourself comes into play in your working life. Have you been building these bridges? You know, um, we always encourage no matter which stage of your career you are, you should be always thinking about reaching out and extend to your network. Yeah. And last but not least, once you are ready for this, am I ready for the interview? As actually, we touched on that in the previous when when the, when the interview. Yeah. Yeah. If you are self-aware, you know what's going on. Um, even when you are at the interview, based on what you can sense around you and how you are projecting yourself, you may be able to you know adapt to the answers to the interview so that it better suits what the interviewer is looking for. Right? Yeah, yeah, correct. And also I said, I think when we did the slides, right, you can see the self and those four elements right there, the, the four icons right there, right? So you can see the four bullet points. The essence of my resume is the first one. The find the latest information is the second one. Reach out to people is the third one. And how ready I am, uh, am I for an interview? So and again, yeah. we, we, will, we will proceed with this deck of slides, right? Talking a little bit about these things, but... Um, we will be going into the branches uh, deeper into resume, deeper into research, deeper into networking, deeper into interview. So please follow us. Please, um, um, you know, um, make yourself aware of the, the events that we'll be, we'll be going through um, for the rest of this year. Okay. All right. Yeah, so and, 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 and if you find any slides that you like, you can more than welcome to take a picture of it. All right. Because uh, we will not be sharing our, our slides. So if you, feel that oh this 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 slide speaks a lot to me or in my situation by all means uh take a picture of it do a screenshot from it yeah yeah, yeah. okay so um five four three two one hope you could screenshot and wait to the next one ready okay <laughs> so 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 this this slide is basically the um you know the what we call the left brain and right brain you probably heard this before left brain uh technical you know right brain um uh, soft skills in collaboration and so on and so forth. Okay, so in, in science, science actually, strangely enough, science has proven there's no such thing as a left and right brain. But, uh, <laughs> but, but basically, you can see, right? Um, are you a left brain person? Are you more a, a technical person? You know, or are you more a you know soft skill kind of person? Right. So I think it is important, right, that in any job, in any job, um, you should have as much of a balance as possible. So I'll give you an example. If you're the nicest guy in the world, super nice guy, wow, super nice lady, and so on and so forth, and you apply for a job, I still can't hire you because there's nothing on the left side that you can offer me, right? So it, it, having one side alone is not going to help you. And, and, and the converse is true. The converse is true. If you are so smart, you are a physicist, rocket science, you know, three PhDs, I don't know, right? But you can't hold a conversation. You know, you can't interview and people like don't feel comfortable with you and so on and so forth. Again, you also probably won't get the job. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. So so basically you have to look at this slide and to think about where your, you know, where are your can I say your gaps, lah, or where are you feeling most vulnerable uh, in? Right? Is it the ability to communicate with people and so on and so forth? You know, I Adrian, I always have this issue. Hey, Lionel, you know, I've always had this issue in, in you know, X, Y, and Z. Right, isolate those things. Come talk to a career advisor, like what Lionel mentioned. Okay, so they get these pictures of left brain, right brain. Right, uh, mm -hmm. Lionel, anything to add? I right here. Yeah, you you brought a regular example. For example, I mean, you mm. could be, you could have find a, a cure for cancer, but you are so bad in communicating and you cannot convince people that whatever that you propose is gonna work. You're just gonna stay where you are. It's mm. not gonna, you know, you. So you you need, you need both, right? So if you are good in doing this, you have very good ideas. Um, you know, you you also need the other side to be able to communicate this idea and convince yeah. them this is the this is the idea. If not, it just stays with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely correct. And also, yeah. um, you know, Lila and myself and our colleagues uh, in the background who you don't see today, we see a lot of people who who tell us, hey, you know, I'm stagnating in my job. You know, I'm not getting promoted, I'm not getting this. Actually, when you think about it, right, it could be down to your skills, right? It's about, you know, you don't have enough right brain elements going on. You're not making yourself visible. You're not, you're not curious enough. You're not putting your hand up enough. No, mm -hmm. you're not making yourself indispensable in the eyes of your boss and things like this. And to be, to be honest, I mean, that, that is some of the things that we hear quite often, you know, some people, you know, 
they find themselves quite forgettable. You know, they get lost in the crowd. But then some people uh, seem to be a little bit more, you know, memorable, you know, visible, whatever you call it, right? Uh, why is that so? Right, because maybe because they have a specific, um, you know, soft skills, lah. You know that 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 at their disposal. In addition to them being able to do the job well, so again we ponder on this slide and we tell ourselves that the the the, the best thing that you should strive for is a nice balance, mm -hmm. right? It, it's 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 perfectly normal to be heavily weighted towards one, yeah. but it should not. You should not have zero in 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 one or the other. Huh? Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I said, if you ponder on this slide, if you feel like you're, you're missing out on something or you feel like, oh, I'm struggling here, huh? again, please uh, come and see uh, one of the career advisors, okay? All right. Again, and then on the hard skills and soft skills, I like this slide a lot, man. I like this slide a lot, okay? When you look at this, it's very self-explanatory. Hard skills are measured by IQ. Soft skills are measured by EQ, right? Situ situationally, the rules and norms stay the same. One plus one is two. <laughs> okay, soft skills, they change, interpretation. And how, where do you learn hard skills? You learn in the classroom. Where do you learn the soft skills? You learn it on the playground, interacting with other people. So those who excel are called smart, whereas those who excel in the soft skills are called popular. Mm. All right, personality stereotypes, introvert for hard skills, extrovert oh, yeah. for, for soft skills. Like okay, that one is a bit stretchy. Like, I mean, you can debate, but they're just trying to make a point. Huh? Mm -hmm. So expectations include logical and then you know, obviously the soft skills people, the, the right side one, creative. Also called left brain, right brain, we talked about that. Serves you well when working alone. Soft skills serve you well when working with others. How many of you, how many of you work alone? <laughs> I mean, uh, so the importance of the soft skills cannot be understated because by and large, right, we definitely work with people. Even if you work alone, you have stakeholders to manage. So you work definitely with others or you answer to others and so on and so forth. So very, very important here. Okay, now the next slide is the big 49%. Okay, 49% chemistry. What does that mean? It means, right, that even though we talked about the left brain and right brain, the left brain is all the scientific part, you know, how good are you how good are you in compliance? Okay, MES 626, you know, CDD, CFT, KYC, and so on and so forth, right? Those are, those are incremental bits and pieces. But the right side, the soft skill side, if you get that right, if you're likable, approachable, people like you, you make an impression, people remember you, that single element alone, I see, I feel, uh, contributes to 49% of you getting a job. 49% mm. of you getting a job, right? Why not 50%? Because as I said, uh, you know, being the nicest person will still not get you a pass mark. I can't, I'm, I'm running a business, man. I, I need to hire someone that fits, that gives me something, right? So even if you're a really nice guy, I still wouldn't hire you. So it's 49, it's not a passing mark, but it is a bunch of points already right there. Just by working on those soft skills and being likable and memorable, and transmitting information in, a, in an enthusiastic way and making the line manager or hiring manager remember you out of 50 people that they may be hiring or, or interviewing in the next few days, right? So if you, can, if you can unlock this bunch of points, right, then all you have to do after that is to make sure that you are, you are clocking as many other points on the left side as possible. Oh, all this, you know, what does the job ask me for? Do I have that, that, that? The more ding, 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 the more your overall points is. And obviously, the overall, the, the, the most points is the winner lah, of the job. Right? So, again, um, this is still within the self and so on and so forth. But understand that the soft skills part is probably the hardest thing to, to train, to learn. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, maybe culturally as well, we're not so comfortable in putting ourselves out there or talking to people and so on and so forth. But it, if, if you do it right, um, you can score a bunch of points. Now, before you say, before you say that, um, um, I'm not that kind of person. Uh, I, you know, it's 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 not it's not me. If you go and if you go to Google and you ask you ask Google, um, is is likability, likability, yeah, trainable? It is actually strangely enough. The answer is yes. You can learn to be likable, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, some something for you all to do, lah. Uh, to 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 explore um and and to, and to research uh, 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 the whole idea of likability and memorability for example it is it is trainable okay yeah, it is. so 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 basically we just wanted to emphasize the importance of the soft skills 
Yeah. Okay. I think I think you sort of answered the question. Our first question for the day. Oh yeah. Oh, first question. Uh, okay. You sort of answer it, and I think that you can you can expand it from there. If you want me to read the question, I mean. Yeah, you read it. Uh, yeah. Okay. The you know someone asked, what if the person has been doing everything right? Right. Mm. I have done the right things. I follow the rules and regulation, but still being overlooked. So, what would yeah. be his Ooh. approach? Okay. Which is like I mean, I, I I have life. I have like my own preliminary answers. <laughs> I mean, quite quite savage are my answers. But do you yeah. want to say something first? I mean, no, yeah. you go ahead, go ahead because I I think more or less you are, you sort of you know answered. Most yeah. Of it. Okay. It so comes I, down to likability. Likability, <laughs> right? So for example, okay, see, so for me, right? Um, if it was me, I would actually see. Uh, okay, I I'm doing everything right, but I'm not getting promoted. And then I'm going to see people who are maybe doing things right and, and getting promoted. What's the oh, difference? Oh, you're not doing anything right. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. What, what, what's the difference? What's the difference between this person and me? Uh? You know what I mean? Right? Yeah. So so basically, right, you try to see what's the difference. Is it because this person puts his hand up more? You know, I don't know. You know, there must be something, right? Uh, I guess all reviews are supposed to be impartial, but, but there's something that's not going... Maybe it's visibility, for example. Maybe your bosses don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Right, maybe your bosses are not aware of how hard you work, you know, and the things that you do, for example. So that could be one of the reasons, right? So the I said my my answer is savage. The savage thing is, for example, if if it's just plain unfairness, ah, huh? don't even worry, like just go. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't say that, but you know what I mean, right? But basically, some things, some things are un may may not seem very very fair. But then if it's really unfair, then you have to make a decision on what yeah. you want to do as a result. And that's the truth. And that's the, the sort of savage answer and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh hope that sort of answers. Good question. Good tough question. Uh mm -hmm. Lina, I don't know whether the, there's another know. question actually. Oh okay, okay. Yeah. Then this one is um how to you know make yourself very self-motivated during this, you know, motivation, how to self-love all this positive during your job search. Basically, I guess, how do you remain positive throughout Very all this? positive, yeah, absolutely. You, because you it wanna... comes to yourself, yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. You you want to try? I mean, do you want to just give your, your five cents I mean, worth? I mean, I mean worth. Someone, someone did mention it today. That just so happened that this morning, someone came uh, to see me and they, they did sort of ask this kind of question. I mean, mm, mm. I would say that, you know, have something that makes you happy, have something that makes you feel good, it mm. could be spending time with your loved ones, your kid, you have kids, you know, you know, mm. just sharing an ice cream with them, you know, think of all these things. And I would say have sort of a, a, a schedule because a lot of us, when you do job search, it seems like it's a hot and cold kind of thing. You know, I feel like doing it. I, I Today, I apply for 20 jobs. I mm. Today, I'm very lazy. No, I think to me is you got to be, you got to be disciplined. Because it's job okay. search is a is 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 an occupation. So treat it like you're at work and 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 keep going so that you keep yourself busy and you don't dwell on things like, oh, how can I send 100 resume? I have nothing. Yeah. yeah because you're I, not being yeah. consistent, you're not disciplined, and, and you give yourself time to get, get this kind of thinking. But if you have a schedule that you follow, which must include, as I said, things that you love to do besides work, you know, besides looking for a job, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I think that's how I will keep myself going when I was uh, retrenched previously. You know, I keep myself busy with things that occupy my time so that I don't, you know, take this dark side and just keep thinking why nobody call me, why you know nobody answer my email. You know, agree, agree. I mean, like um, the, and and I, you know, even though there's like a quite a number of you out in the market, I'm I'm not afraid to say, um, for myself. I feel like I I try to be great uh, uh grateful, grateful ah, for yes yes yeah, good, yeah. good one Gra yeah, gratitude right is one yeah. of them. Yes. Gra gratefulness for what I do have uh is very underrated because all the time, you know uh we always we always think about what we don't have but we don't really focus on what we already do have and it could be very simple things like waking up in the morning I mean seriously I mean like personally. Um, I know of people who just, you know, just passed away for just random reasons. I'm obviously touch with we don't want all the energy that they happen, but mm -hmm. being able to wake up and continue the fight or the struggle, even though it is a struggle, is is a blessing. Right? Like what Lionel mentioned as well. I I try to, you know, I try to find joy 
in gratitude for what I do have, like, you know, um, the kids uh, and so on and so forth, my ability to, you know, share my knowledge, um, you know, with, with, with you guys and so on and so I I try to find something lah. Uh, yeah. Because like what he mentioned, I think it's it's very real. Because once you, once you carry um, negativity, right, it is incredibly hard to shake it off because it yeah. will show up in um in an interview situation. As much as you try to hide it, right, there is a chance it will creep back in, and then you know good. I mean, like very skilled line managers or HR people, they will they will send something is off, right. And but that's also a very good question, like you know, uh, the, the person that asked the question because it leads us quite nicely into the things that you can't control. Yeah, you can, exactly. you can you, yeah, yeah, you can you can apply for hundred jobs, but after that, that's out of your control. What happens after that? And then now we we go into this whole idea of um, the 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 other already. So um, shall we just proceed and then we'll take yeah. the we'll, yeah, I think we'll there's, the, there's yeah. another question, but we can I think we should proceed first. Let's proceed because I think maybe the question we can align it to yes. some of the, the content we can go later. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next the dimension which is sort of like primarily responsible for you know the networking and interview part and you know even the whether or not my CV gets picked up is the others, right? The people or the group of people that's outside of you who have control on whether or not you get an interview, you get a job, and so on and so forth. These things, uh, these elements, right, you can't really control. Given an opportunity, you may you may affect it a little bit, right, make an impression and so on and so forth. But by and large, this is outside of your control already, okay? So let's go. So um, the first thing uh, might be bad news for many of you who don't like it. Uh, networking is no longer an option. That's, that's the truth. You need to be able to talk to people uh, you know and you, you need to be able to talk to new people you need to be able to ask current people to introduce you to new people mm. right and the power of networking is incredible okay Lionel has his stories I have mine and I, I'm, I'm telling you with all modesty I really have I, most of the jobs that I have gotten were through networks. I'll give you an example. I was a headhunter for 10 years and I tried my best to do good service for my candidates. One of the candidates I put in a bank and then this candidate came to me and said, I have a role for you. Uh, I thought about you and I got the job. I got the job, how? So she, she introduced me to the job um, and I went in and this is a, a, a US investment bank, right? I got in, I interviewed one interview the hiring manager says, since you're a headhunter and you know this candidate, and since you already you already talk to all of us in HR on a day-to-day -day basis, we don't really have to we don't really have to interview you that much. And you know, I got the offer, right? And so ever since then, I felt like the power of networking or just really just milking your network, right, is super important. But I do understand that oftentimes it doesn't come naturally. To, to a lot of us, right? Mm -hmm. So again, not trying to sell Koyo or whatever it is, but if you have issues in this area, come see career advisor, okay? The next thing is that you need to be memorable, as I mentioned already, so no, I don't want to say too much about it, right? But memorability is, is really good. Again, again, remember, you apply to just MNC or this big giant bank and so on and so forth to, to a very sexy role. And you know this role is going to attract 200 applications because LinkedIn tells you 200 people apply already. Right? You put in a good CV, right? Uh, and then you get called for an interview. You are candidate number one of the day. And you know that this, this person is going to interview 20 others or 19 others. How do you remain top of mind at the end of the day? Right? So memorability is very good. So what you want to do is you want to give an interview such that after your interview, the line manager's HR person uh, will be saying something like, I hope the next candidate is as good as the first one. Mm. You know? Right? Yeah. Or after the twentieth one, I say, you know what? I still like Lionel. You know, for example, right? That's memorability. Okay. So again, these are things that you have to try to learn and and sort of like uh, internalize. And what you offer and how you articulate it. You have all these skills. the The key would be how do you get this across to uh, the interviewer or the HR person, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the root of this point comes from your CV firstly, huh? because you need to be able to articulate uh, your transferable skills, 
and how effective you were in your in your uh, uh, in your previous roles. Okay, uh, and and as I said, articulate it in the most appropriate and non long winded fashion, right? And so when you are meeting someone in person, you are able to then expand on it verbally to someone who asks you that question. Uh, so it is the, about what you offer, paper, and when you meet when you meet someone, how you articulate it, right? And this is where we teach you about elevator pitching and your answer shouldn't be more than two minutes or 90 seconds because after that, line manager thinking about what to eat for lunch already, you know, not listening to you very much already, right? So these are the things that are very important. Um, Lino, stop me if you want to just add, add in anything. Um, okay. yeah, and then predict, yeah. And then the last one will be predicting and practicing without looking like you did. What does that mean? It means that before your interview or before talking to someone, you do as much you do as much searching or researching as possible. Think about what the questions might be and rehearse answers to the question. But then sound as though you sound as sound like you don't you didn't rehearse. I don't know how to explain it to you. Right? For example, okay, you know that XYZ company is going for an IPO or you know this something's happening to this, that, whatever. Right? Um, when you when someone asks you, hey, so what do you think of uh, X, Y, and Z. You know, ponder a bit. You know the answer already, yeah? Ponder a bit. Well, I think that, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's like a natural, uh, a natural delivery of things that you're already prepared for. Works wonders. Okay, so um, prepare before. Go inside and pretend that you didn't prepare. Also, act like you didn't because the, 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 the naturalness, right, is really, really good. Okay, Lionel, what do you think? Agree or don't agree? Or do you have a different I, I, way? I, no, I, I agree to, with you, not because you're my colleague and we have to speak the same, but because you know us. Not true. Really Please agree. feel free. Yeah, this is we not, don't this agree. Is an art. We, we do. We do have <laughs> yeah. a lot of friendly banter uh, yeah, among yeah, ourselves. Yeah. But this this, this is really true. In a, you know, I just want to add one thing. I mean, mm. for those of you people that almost want to give up on networking, please realize that networking is like a farming activity. It takes time for the crops to grow. You cannot expect instantaneous result just because you go for a networking session you cannot expect hundreds of offers will come in no it takes time you need to build that relationship you need to cultivate your crops you need to water it you need to you know take care of it so that you will bear you the fruits because it's not like a hunter a hunter goes out they hunt for the meat in instant gratification but for networking you you really need patience right you really need i mean some of you could be very lucky, you know, immediately you get results, but it doesn't happen to everybody. Yeah. But yeah. It, because in general, it's, it's, it takes time. That's what Adrian said. Um, almost half of my roles that I got is, is from networking. It's, if someone came and approached me and asked me whether I'm interested. And, and it's not someone that I just know. It's usually someone I've known for a few years. Someone that I've maintained a relationship with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you guys have heard it, right? Your network is your. Feel free to put in the chat. Uh, what is the? <laughs> your network is your dash. What is the dash? You all should know already, lah. Huh? Your network is your. Uh, did we get an answer already? Yeah, yeah, we got net yes, worth. Yes. That's yes. right. Yes, yes. awesome guys, network. awesome. Yeah, your network right. is your net worth, and that is absolutely true. Okay, because these people are gonna be the ones that help you refer you internally, you know, and so on and so forth, right? Because as I said, right, um. JP Morgan is the, is, 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 the, is the bank that I joined, right? So um, the internal candidate, who used to be my candidate, goes inside and tells the, the line manager, I believe that Adrian can be one of us. Us. Right? <laughs> so ah, so that's very that's very powerful, you know? When someone's, someone on the inside says, I see him or her as one of us. It's very powerful, right? So your network is your net worth. So remember that, okay? Okay, so is the next thing, huh? Right. Okay. Um, I also wanted to highlight this one, right? Um, many studies have talked about uh, again what Lionel and I have shared with you about the others as well. If you want to go into look at this, it's on the top right hand side, the QR code. Please scan it, and then you get the full the full article right here. Again, people have said how to get a job often comes down to one elite personal asset that many people don't realize, and it is basically two. Network, ah. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? And this is a, a CNBC piece because I, I I like it from these big sources rather than you know small 
kind of like sources, right? So I saw this, it caught my eye, and I wanted to share with you, right? Okay, so uh, Lino, you know, don't tell them, huh? I got the next one, huh? Okay, so in the chat, what is the answer to this? It is not what you know, it's... Go for it, guys. Go for it. If it is not what you know, it is... It is what? Who you know, who you know, who you know, who you know. Come on. Yep. Anyone got a different answer? Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I would say, who you know on the inside. Okay. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Okay, that's right. Almost there. Wow. Almost there. Yeah. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> it's, it's, so, my answer is slightly different. Okay. My answer is the to be state. Right? It's like, okay. So, I'm going to show it. Who like you? Who want to help you? Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Elsa. Okay. It's not uh, what you know it is. Who knows you? Not who you know, it's who knows you, right? So this is the to be state. This is the state that we always want to be. So again, where this came from when I was doing this slide, again, as I told you when I was a headhunter, many, many years ago, my one of the interview questions actually interviewers asked me, you know, asked me, Adrian, I don't care about who you know. I want to know who knows you, right? So he said, basically, if Adrian calls this person, this person will answer. Who knows you, Adrian? Who knows you? Tough question. And so I wanted to share this with you. Sometimes it's not who you know. And you know, uh, it's, it's also about who knows you, who remembers you, right? Over the years, for example, right? The legacy that you have left, the, you know, the, 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 the results that you have given long after you've gone, the standards that you have passed, the things that you have done, long after you're gone, right? Mm. So remember this new phrase, it's not what you know, it's who knows you, right? Mm. So uh, again, uh, if, if, if you guys want to share anything, thoughts, comments, and so on, so on, again, chat function, yeah. okay? Questions yeah. coming in. Questions, okay, come. Uh, sh are, are the questions uh, aligned to what we're talking about? One of them is, one of them asks okay. how to okay. make yourself memorable, since you are talking about who knows you, means you must be memorable enough for them to know who you are. So, any tips on making yourself more memorable? Hey, sorry, I didn't see that one. Say again. Uh, it's the any... second question, actually. Oh, it's second in... tips. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are some tips to make yourself uh, mm -hmm. a, a memorable candidate? Okay, this is... Uh, okay, so for me, a memorable candidate um, is someone that I meet in person, right? How do I meet this person in, in, in person? If uh, I will get to meet this person in person through his resume first... And I, I like the resume, and I invite the person to to come in for a chat, right? Uh, another way I meet people is maybe through networking events, right? Uh, net, net, uh, networking events. A memorable person to me, Lino, I don't know about you, please chip in after this. A memorable person for me is one who doesn't really talk 100% business, but talks about mm -hmm. life in general. Yes. Yes, yes. Life in general. Some of the best friends that I have or people that I know, we became so tight because we talked about the struggles that we have as parents or, you know, and so on and so forth. It's about just being an authentic human being. And I, again, it sounds philosophical, but it is so true. It is just, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's very true, right? It's about breaking the ice and talking about the trust and truth. Everybody is a working person, but that's one aspect. The thing that really matters in our lives are the things outside of work. And if you can connect on that level, you can expect help on the other level, on the professional side. Yeah. So this, I, I think, feel like, I, that, yeah. yeah go I ahead. think what you're talking about is just before we get to carry, I agree with you totally. Yeah. Um, this is being memorable at networking events. But yes. being memorable at interview is, 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 is a different ballgame, right? So Okay, yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah. You you want to carry on on that on, on the on that topic? Yeah. So as as as, as what Adrian is saying, um, during networking events, you know, if you only concentrate on give me a job, help me, I'm so pitiful. You you you. That's why you're not doing well in in your networking activities because all you bring are all these things. But during networking activities, you are more than free to to discuss other things that's beside work. And if that's the opportunity how you, arises. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah. That's yeah. how you, as you said, we, we become memorable because I will remember, ah, someone had the same struggle as me or ah, someone had the same belief as me, same personality as me, same. So, which is why that's what uh, Adrian put up. The, the person can say, 
he can be one of us because she knows she knows um uh, Adrian from not just from work but you know from as a person yes as a person as right? a person I mean yeah, I mean that that is how you you keep yourself memorable in the networking and of course correct uh, yeah. In yeah, the interview right. is is totally profession is work, yeah. So how do you make it so memorable? I mean, for me is if you can, in ninety seconds, tell me all about yourself, and I can remember it. That's that's how you become memorable. Yeah. You now many people yeah. just go on and on and on. As what Adrian say, if you if you overshoot that ninety second magic mark, the mind starts to wander. It's, it's, it's a natural human thing. I mean, no offense to anybody. It's, it's, it's natural. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the brain was like, okay, yada, 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 let's go somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. So, and and they, most people are too polite to tell you to stop. So they'll listen. Yes. You they'll know, let you they, carry on while they, they are you, thinking they about. let you carry on. So, <laughs> yes. And and I think, right, I mean, for me, because Lionel and I, we, we see candidates on a daily basis, but we see different candidates, right? Um, so for me personally, uh, I don't know about you, Lionel, but for, for me, one of the biggest issues, are, because the first thing that I ask people when they come and see me, oh, okay, I have your resume. Tell me about yourself, right? So yeah. the question, tell me about yourself, that's right? What, what... And so when they answer the question, right, I already can tell already, you know? So, you know, I wanted to say, I wanted to say before we started this session that be, be ready that this session is going to be full of analogies, analogies, you know? You know, uh, imagine this, it's like this, it's like that, or you think about this, think about that. Okay, so this is the first analogy. I always use this because, you know, people who know me, they know that I'm a, I, I'm coffee, I'm a coffee maniac, right? So um, uh, I like coffee and so on and so forth, right? And we all know um, the most potent coffee comes in a small package and it's probably called an espresso, right? It's an espresso, so small. You take a hit of that, you straight away wake up, huh? okay? Right? Um, the opposite of that is like say an um like a, an like an americano, which is the heat of espresso plus water and ice. If it's ice, ice black or americano, um, what you wanna shoot for in your resume, uh, but also in the way you articulate is an espresso powered shot. That when the consumer consumes it, first straight away wake up. You know what I mean? It's like a boom from the blue. Boom. You know. So like what Lionel mentioned in an interview situation. How do you make yourself memorable? You do so by giving them an espresso powered elevator pitch. You know, and so on and so forth. And you make it as enter no enter oh yeah, maybe entertaining, but engaging as possible. So in my experience, right, when I was much, much younger, when I interviewed and I tried different things, right? The ones that really said, right, had this one common theme. It says, Adrian, I really like how you how you did that in a story fashion. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I like the way you 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 frame your experience in a story fashion. How did you evolve, and then you make it like ninety seconds in a story? Again, another analogy, another analogy. Um, Hollywood movies, the trailers, mm -hmm. the trailers are the ones that extract, make you oh my god, I need to see this show, I need to see this show, or even in a book, right? The back page, the 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 back page, the the summary. My God, I need to buy this book. This sounds interesting. This all sounds great. Same thing here. Same thing here. You need to make it engaging. You need to make, make yourself engaging. You need to structure your speech in a way where it is very engaging and very people want to listen to uh, listen to it more. Right? Because at the end of the day, it is an introduction to people. It is a way you market yourself psychologically and so on and so forth. Right? So again, the, 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 summarizing this whole chapter is all about um, how do you influence this whole dimension of the others when you can't really fully influence how do you maximize your influence on this group of people mm. on the people they don't have control Ag agree mm. Lionel? agree yeah. okay cool i think we All should right. move on if not we sure <laughs> sure let's let's move on so guys as i as i said we will we, we promise to try to answer as many as we can yeah. we don't know right but we try huh? okay so the last one is technology Right, we we can't we can't uh we can't run away from the fact that it is very pervasive in our lives, and it's infiltrating with the whole idea of Gen AI and so on and so forth in our lives. Um, it is uh it's something that we, we have to appreciate, uh, and we have to live with. Okay, so uh you can see the two icons, the resume and the research. Right, technology can help you to do that. Right, okay, so um. 
what does the ATS want to see in my resume? So when you, what does that mean? What does the automated tracking system want to see in my resume? So when you apply online, chances are there's a backend system that is already looking out and screening out people. Mm. Uh, screen out people or screening in people, right? Depending on specific things. Like for example, very, very simple thing. Again, throughout the course of the year, you will you will learn more in-depth things. For example, um, if the job is asking for A, B, and C, and A, B, and C does not even appear in your resume, mm. it don't look good for you, okay? So that's, that's, that's what I, I'll say. So for example, uh, very simple thing, ATS is going to see, is going to be one thing to see the keywords, right? The keywords uh, in, in, your, uh, in, in, the, in your resume. So obviously when you structure a resume, and that is the reason why every career coach, doesn't matter if it's WSG, which, whichever career coach or IBF, we will always tell you one resume for every job. Unless it's, a, is, unless it's an identical job. Then maybe you yeah. can use the same resume. Yeah. Right? There should there be one some, resume. Yeah, even that, even saying that there should be some some something. You know, some I totally, thing I totally yes. agree. So yeah. for myself, right, even though um um even though I'm 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 kind of like a very right brain person, when it comes to a resume, I have hundreds of versions in my hard disk at home. And to a, to the to the untrained eye, when you look at one version versus the next, you cannot see anything. But when you see, when you spot it properly, what you'll see is that I moved one bullet point up and one bullet point down, and I save it as version. Why? Because the job asked me in that order, so I just reordered mm -hmm. it for him. So I'll do. <laughs> yes, I do. yes. Correct. Right, right. Yeah. So every, every career coach should tell you one resume for one job. Right. Some uh, people so, bring to rule them all that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> so you, you have to customize again. Talk about customization, right? So what does ATS want to see? They want to see very specific things, and therefore you should be sending a very specific resume. Okay, next one, next one, ah, huh? next one. Can Gen AI help me? How much can it help me? Right, and where can I get value information? Can Gen AI help me? How many of you have attempted to write a resume using ChatGPT? Again, feel free to put it in the chat function. Okay, so Gen AI is very, very helpful. I've, I've, I've been playing with it and testing it for you know, a fair amount of time already, right? And I've come to my own conclusions, which we will talk about uh, later, right? And of course, in this kind of advent of um, um, information, where can I get, value, uh, get valuable information? Um, for those of you who are born in the 60s or 70s or, and so on and so forth, you will remember as you were growing up, right? Where you get information right, is very different to where you get information now. When I was a headhunter learning about financial markets, global markets, and investment banking, how did I learn? There was no Google. There was none. My search engine back there was, I know or no, Alta Vista, Lycos. Oh, yes. You guys know Lycos, Alta Vista? Those were my search engines. And how did I learn? I learned by sitting beside someone and listening to everything he said, writing down and collating and understanding what is, what is all this and making this very old school, very, very slow process. Right now, instantaneous with Gen AI even faster, right? So you have to appreciate technology can work for you, work against you, mm. right? Your perception, huh? but try your best to work with it rather than against it, right? Last thing is, uh, am I ready for virtual interview technology is very important. Like for example, if you're doing a Zoom, I cannot emphasize the importance of making sure that the computer works well. You don't have any you know, uh, distractions. You don't have a backlight hitting you that make your face all black, right? <laughs> your your mic, everything is working well. Very crisp, very clear, strong bandwidth, and, and so on and so forth for a very smooth interview. Because again, thinking about myself, why I added this bullet point. Why? Because uh, when I do coaching sessions, I see kids running across. <laughs> when I'm having coaching sessions, kids running across, right? I see a person sitting at a dining table doing this session with me and uh, her, his or her parents, God bless them, um, um, watching TV behind. So, or, or maybe, you know, a, 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 a uh, what do you call it? A clothes, clothes rack behind, behind him or her with clothes that shouldn't be there visually. <laughs> okay. So everything, you must remember these things, if it's a virtual interview, first impression counts, huh? first impression counts and, yeah, so you know, these these are, am I ready for it? How does technology help me? Okay, so again, something for you to think about. So 
talking about the whole gen AI thing, because we need to talk about it because it's the elephant in the room. Um, if you have uh, 3.5, ChatGPT 3.5, um, which is the free version, you are able to ask things like this. Can you explain investment banking in layman's terms? Absolutely, you can. You know, I you know the the this thing generated this in one minute. Oh, sorry, one second. I took like weeks to understand. You know, back in the day, you know. So I looked at it. I said, "Man, this is this is right. I wish I had this. I wish I had this." You know. And so, when you ask it specific questions to teach you about information that's already ready available, you should be able to get fairly good results. I don't think it's one hundred percent accurate. Because when I test the system and I push it a bit more, I ask it, what about this? It, they will say something, oh, I apologize. I forgot to, uh, uh, you are absolutely right. I, that, it, you know, so basically it is not 100% um, accurate, I would say, but it, it does a very fair job. So in terms of asking it knowledge that it already knows, thumbs up, thumbs up. When you ask ChatGPT, can you help? Can you help me write a resume? I don't know again, I'm not really looking at the chat. Um, can you help me write a resume? Um, this is the answer I get. Of course I can. To get started, please provide me with some information. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, guys, my humble opinion. If you are gonna be putting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten to chat GPT, you really might as well do it yourself. I uh, you know as in like you, you really might as well do it yourself. Or learn to do it yourself. Learn how to fish. Right, don't rely on this on 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 chat GPT to do because you have to you have to put in the information anyway, right? So you might as well just do it yourself. Then come to a career advisor, uh, to see whether or not the CV makes sense. Mm -hmm. Just a thought, lah. Huh? So in my humble opinion, I would give this a bit of a thumbs down. Maybe to be fair, maybe a thumbs middle, but but for me, it's 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 kind of like less useful in that sense. So the good news for me and Lionel is that we have a job. Yes, we think still yeah. All right. Okay. So um. <laughs> Um, what do you think, Lionel? Do you, do you agree with these two slides that is good for some things, maybe less useful for certain other things? I mean, it's, it's, to be fair, all technology is the same. I mean, that's what you said. Your son can use his um, his iPad to do research so that it helps him to do his PSLE well, or he can use the same iPad and, you know, download throw, the latest throw curveballs game. Throw curveballs yeah, at, at Pokemon yeah. Go. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, yeah. so, you know, technology is a 2 edge which uh, you, you need to be able to use it to complement, to help you, but you also must realize that it cannot do everything for you. It can't so, do everything for you. And you shouldn't be too reliant on, on things right. like the Bible. That's the Bible truth. Huh? It's, not, yeah. it's not necessarily true, okay? Because as I said, if you press it a bit more, they will give you more and more answers and so on and so forth. They will say yes to everything you ask, but yeah. you've got to be very, very careful with it, right? And so when it comes to things like you're asking you to create something, like cre help me create a resume, uh, then it becomes to me less useful because then it relies on input. And if you are going to put all this input, you can do it yourself. I firmly believe you can do it yourself or we firmly believe that you can do it yourself. Right? So again, mm. less useful. So use with care. Now, 3.5 yes. is a very fast version. ChatGPT, uh, if you are pay, if you are a paid subscription of uh, ChatGPT 4, you will get a few more um, useful things. So ChatGPT 4 can actually generate things for you. Graphics, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, charts and so on and so forth, they can do that, okay? Bit slower in its response, but again, I think that um, if you try even ChatGPT4, it is damn frustrating, and uh, I, I will I will tell you um, a story about it uh, later we have the time, okay? okay. Uh, and and yeah. I think the other point that we should mention is, now that we mentioned you use ChatGPT, 20 of you will be doing it, and then if you all feed the same information, you're going to count with the same resume, and the, the customization thing becomes not. Yeah, and but okay, this is something I want to tell all of you here. Listen <laughs> carefully, right? A well-trained coach, uh, a well-trained coach, a well and therefore a well-trained HR manager, manager yeah. they, we can find out which re a resume that's been written by ChatGPT. You know why? Let me tell you why. Because it uses the most bombastic words possible. <laughs> it uses words that humans just don't use. Really, really, really. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, it's just so unnatural. So when I read resumes, I say, this definitely is a chat GPT one because it's it's just very unnatural, the choice of words they use. Like nobody use, talks yeah. like that, right? Nobody <laughs> talks like that. No, no, no human talks like that. I mean, not the, the talks like that, you know what I mean, right? My fervor for, you know, it's like stuff like that. It's, it's, it's weird. Nobody says that. So be careful when you use it. Don't use it wholesale. Definitely come and speak to a career advisor. 
okay, because a well-trained um, HR person and so on, so on, we will we will be able to see. Okay, so uh, use your caution. Okay, so now we, we covered the dimensional thing. You now know the importance of the self. We also recognize the importance of the people and the things that we cannot control, mm -hmm. the others. We also recognize the importance, the, 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 the value of using technology in our lives to help us in our career search and so on and so forth, right? So those are the three big dimensions that you need to know. And as I said, many things in life fall within those neat buckets, you know? Let's now talk about the top tips for each of the fantastic four, the resume research networking. And remember, not a deep dive, we're just going to mm -hmm. talk about a few high-level things. And then coming in the, in the coming weeks and months, we will go into individual uh, individual uh, in-depth session, like, for example, the resume and so on and so forth. So again, watch this space, okay? So let's yeah, and, go and, one and by one. At yeah. this point in time, let's remember one of our colleagues who is uh, having fun somewhere else. You know, she always liked to say, you know, every career coach will have their own tips Oh, yeah, the, the meat and bones. Yes, the meat <laughs> and the bones. Let's give some, you know, homage to our lovely colleagues who's enjoying. When she, when she reads, yeah, when she uh, sort of like... When she uh, reads this recording, they show like, oh, yeah, no, exactly, you yeah. <laughs> so, so, yes, yes so that's correct. So, all these tips that we're going to give, you know, if you're comfortable with it, by all means, use them, right? No, yeah. no problem. We're not going to charge you for it. Um, But, you know... <laughs> Take whatever that is useful to you, whatever that you say, hey, this this works for me, you know, this is what yeah. I think can help yeah, yeah, yeah. me. Yes. So, okay. Spit right? out so the bones. It's not, it's, yeah, correct. Spit, Spit out the bones. Yeah. And, and take the meat. The meat. But hopefully, yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully, there will, shouldn't hopefully not be too much deviation between, <laughs> uh, the, because this is just not the common sense, lah. I suppose. Okay, so top tips for your resume. Uh, let's do. Uh, let's do it. I know. Um, first one, aim for one. Yes, one or two pages. Okay, now some of you be saying, you got to be kidding me. What one page? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the truth is one page resumes can be done. Okay, yeah. I know the chat is exploding right now, but I want you guys to guess what kind of conditions or what kind of candidates could actually do a one page resume. So f uh, feel free to put it in the chat. Let's see how, you know, let's see how self-aware you know, and, and self-sufficient you are, right? Because sometimes you feel like, oh no, I, I don't know how to do this. But actually you're very smart. You, you then smarter than you give yourself a credit for. So again, feel free to chat. Um, um, how What kind of individuals can do a one-page CV uh, because it seems like almost impossible. Or, so so back to the bullet point, all two pages. Two pages, as far as I'm concerned, and I hope Lionel shares the same thing, is what we call the gold standard gold uh, CV. Standard, yes. Gold two standard. Pages. You see the mouse? See the mouse? Yeah. One, two. One swipe, two swipe, and I'm done. <laughs> the, the CV <laughs> is done, right? If it's six pages, seven pages, eight, nine, ten, and trust me, we see those things. Again, for those people who have that, we're not here to name and shame. No, but let me tell yeah. you something. If you don't want to read a 10-page document, neither does the line manager. Okay. And remember, these people, especially if you apply for, you know, you if you apply for like really big companies and jobs which will attract hundreds and hundreds of applications, you do not want to send a 10-page document. Okay? Because they don't have, I, say, I don't have time for this. I scroll, 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 cannot finish. How do we then just throw away? Huh? Make sure, again, espresso, Americano, you're looking for an espresso powered resume or CV. So it's very, very important. Okay. Again, pitching our services, go see a career coach if you're having trouble because we will teach you or we will try to help you to take out what, you know, to, to keep the meat and spit out the bones. <laughs> 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 Say that again. Okay. So, uh, how many people can uh can you know can write uh one page resume? First one, first type of people, uh young graduate or a career beginner, someone who just started his or her career. Number one, so if by chance, if by chance, uh, many many of us here in this audience are not a recent graduate, the other person that can do a one page resume is someone who has been in one company for his, his or her entire life. Okay, okay. so. Yeah. So if you have been very in one rare, company, but yes, very yes. rare, or maybe two companies for let's say ten years. 15 years, you know, ah, one page. So it's, uh, I would say, well, platinum CV, but, but by and large, right. Um, the two page resume is what you should, you should aim for. I haven't seen Lino CV, but I know mine. Okay. I know mine. Huh? I, I'm a kid of the seventies. I've got, uh, you know, 20 plus years of experience, a uh, little, little bit less than Lionel. Okay. But, but I have told myself, I have only one rule for myself. My rule when it comes to resume is that I can write anything. I don't write anything as long as it's before. It's as long as it's less than two pages, and I do that. So my current resume is one 
and a half pages long. How did I do that? Um, maybe some of you all find out, but it's a story for another time, okay? <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, for one page, two page, right? I think so. And focus on how your experience fits the role. Maybe remember one CV for every job. You take out, you take a master version of your resume. You take out, you look at the job. Okay, this one don't need, this one don't need, this one don't need, this one don't need, this one don't need. And you're left with what you do need. So focus on how your experience fits the role. I'm, I'm, Lina, I'm going to speed up a bit more so that we can have time for some Q&A. Yeah, correct. Right? Yeah. So JDs from the keywords, uh, keywords from the JDs will be what the ATS is looking for. We talked about that. So make sure if you're mm. applying for a compliance job, please have some compliance stuff inside your, your resume. Have, have some something right? go on it, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, star and part again throughout the year you you might see a star situation task action result or you know problem action result bullet points so we will teach you how to do these kinds of bullet points uh, these bullet points are designed for impact okay uh, quantified and so on and so forth what's the situation what's the task what's the action and you know uh, what's the result or, or what's the problem what's the action what's the result huh? uh, type of bullet points any other bullet point uh, it will be too job description ish so you want to stay away from that okay too bland and too uh, doesn't say much about you. So mm -hmm. again, watch the space. So that's one thing. Okay, so the next thing, the top tips for research. Um, the first one is where do you get information from? Obviously standard, like, newspapers, information providers, Bloomberg, and so on and so forth, right? Um, if you are a finance person, you should be reading the FT, you should be reading Business Times because I can tell you even in this day and age, right? people ask, so, so what's the most interesting thing that you heard, read in the BT today or the FT today? Because they assume that you, you, you've read it. Huh? Or maybe you're a tech person, find out what's happening in your space today or yesterday. What's the next uh, top thing? Because they want to make sure that you're in the know and you're current. Okay. The next one is ChatGPT. ChatGPT is very useful, for example, for giving you an alternate idea. So I can put something like, what challenges might this company be facing? What, what do you think? You know, And then it will give you a very interesting answer. Again, you need to cross-check and fact-check. Okay. So, um, but, but it will give you some alternate views. Opinion pieces are also very, very useful. What are others saying about um, uh, about this company and so on and so forth, right? Reporters, journalists, and so on and so forth, right? Or critics, even critics. Oh, this, this company is like, it's really terrible because of X, Y, Z. You may not agree with it, but you listen to the points of view because it might be useful. And then obviously, don't just do a research on this company. Do research on the competitors and the competitive mm -hmm. landscape around this company, right? Right, so because you never know when a question will come up, say what what do you think that we should be doing that our competitors are doing, you know, or, or we, you know how do, or what we should yeah. do things that's better. You know, exactly, like yeah. right. So research, you gotta you gotta do all of this stuff. What does research help you with? It helps you with that inbuilt ammunition for your interview because it's all inside. It's all inside already. You may not have to showcase all of this, but on the event, someone hits you with a question from the side, you're prepared. You're prepared. Mm. Research very important. Second fantastic four. Okay, and number one, and and the the, the last one is obviously talk to people. Could be into uh, current staff. Could be ex staff about the company, right? In fact, it's very very uh, very valuable if you hear it from an employer or an ex employee. Okay. So top tips for networking. That's number three. Number one, uh, what, who's your network? Who's your net worth? Right, friends and ex colleagues. Obviously, right, friends and ex colleagues. Um, sometimes you you expand your network by going cold, uh, either using LinkedIn or the connects or what we call in mails, right? This one again is a skill, and this one we will be running a session later. No, no, not 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 so late lah, but soon now. Okay, so watch soon. this space. Yeah, soon, right? This one is very difficult, but it's something that is very powerful if you can get it right. I mean, I again, uh, you know, myself as a headhunter for 10, 15 years, I could only survive that long because. I, I use this number, uh, this call approach because I was in a very small firm. People didn't know me very much. So I have to really reach out to people and people always want to know what do you write? What do you say? Again, we'll, we will share this uh, in, a, in a more in-depth uh, session uh, soon. Okay. Uh, industry events, very important, right? That, that events, as I mentioned, IBF uh, organizers, you know, maybe you're part of a CFA society, you know, maybe alumni associations and so on and so forth. So, Keep your eye out for industry events where you can mix and mingle with a bunch of target individuals, okay? And then obviously dress appropriately. First impressions last a long time and I put capitalized L-O-N-G long because they do last a very long time. Long time. And you guys can understand this because one bad impression from one person that you've never met before, just one bad impression, that is it, bro. You yeah. know, and then, you know, yeah. Finish already because that impression is gonna, you're gonna have to do a lot to rectify that. Very easy to break the impression, but very hard to fix the impression. 
right? Mm -hmm. So dress appropriately because first impression lasts a long time. Okay, uh, dre uh, you know, make sure that your your you know even like your shirt is pressed, your your trousers, you know, wear yeah. the right shoes and so on and so forth. Comb your hair, put a bit of cologne or something like that, right? And just be at your best, you know, because visually the eyes, you know, we we take information from the eyes and you want to make yes. sure that wow, this guy is wow, very well dressed, and so on and so forth, right? So networking. Um, and the top tips for interview, uh, virtual and physical preparation is top in tip top shape. We talked about preparation for virtual interview just now. Your technology should all be there. You know, nobody should be disturbing you. No kids running around. Uh, nobody on the outside uh, playing uh, PlayStation and sucking ninety percent of the bandwidth. You know, and things like that. Um, make sure everything is is ready and internally you are ready. You're calm and you're and you're you're, you're ready. Physical preparations also. Um, uh, physical is a, a bit trickier, but very more valuable because you get to see someone in person, right? So you're going to go through a lot of physiological things like, um, you know, you're going to go to the office, someone is going to give you an access pass, you go upstairs, you talk to the receptionist, you, give, you bring you to a room. And when you're in that room, I guarantee your hands start sweating already. Your hands will start sweating and it's the hand that you're supposed to shake the person's hand with when, when he or she appears, right? They're, oh my God, I panic. No yes. panic, right? right? So, so you know, uh, be, make sure that you're calm, collected you know and so on and so forth right look out the window get some inspiration and so on and so forth right uh and and just be be present in the moment okay next one tell me about yourself we talked about this 90 seconds to two minute max beyond that and uh it's still long already. yeah yeah some people are doing like some people who have five jobs right Lionel, i don't know about you some people have five jobs do two minutes a job that's just way too long okay yeah <laughs> That's, that's, the, that's the kind of dangerous as well. So you need to learn how to say that. Tell me about yourself in a story summary fashion, which again, we, we, will, we, we, we hope will to share help. with you. Yes. Huh? We will help you. Uh, energy, focus, cool, calm, and collected. You need to generate energy within the session, enthusiastic, upbeat, and so on. So focus on what the person is talking about, what is asking you, cool, calm, and collected, especially when they hit you with a question that you are like entirely not prepared for. Right? If you notice some, if you go on YouTube and so on and so forth, you know, politicians or whatever it is, they get hit with a question, there'll always be a pause. Well, I appreciate you for asking that question or that's a really good question. Let me think about that. As you're saying or constructing an answer, you're buying time. By saying those words, that is a very good question. I never thought about it that way. As you're saying it, your brain is already processing and okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to frame an answer, you know, and so on and so forth, right? Cool, calm, and don't panic. Don't panic, right? Just uh, try to compose yourself and try to generate an authentic best answer as you possibly can uh, in as swift a way as possible, right? And remember, Lionel and I, we always agree, do not let your mouth speak faster than your brain. Brain mm -hmm. comes first, mouth comes second, right? Because if you start, if your mouth goes first, you are going to find yourself in a heap of trouble if you're saying stuff that you, makes no sense or if they probe you more, you're chill out ready, right? So brain first, mouth second, right? But... At, at all times, try yourself to, you know, try to be uh, cool, calm, and collected and just bring the entire day's worth of energy into that to show the enthusiasm, lean in, good eye contact, all that stuff in the, in the interview, okay? And obviously, as I said, prepare for lightly tough questions that they might ask you. For example, short stints. How come you're here only for four months? How come you're here for three months? And so on and so on. Be prepared for that, huh? okay? But also, prepare to ask tough questions, but good questions. Prepare to give them, uh, ask them a question, which is not something that they find you find on their website, or or, or any anywhere. Ask them a intelligent question that demonstrates that you actually thought deeply about the company and what what they're all about. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So again, uh, what what other coaches might say is true. Please don't say I have no questions for you. Thank you. Uh, ask something lah. Oh, ask something. Uh, one or two questions are okay. Okay. And uh, we also we saw we also talk about like you know outlooks and so on and so forth, right? Again, I'm blazing through this. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, in terms of 2024, I, I got this from um, my career's future, and I got these charts from Manpower, which is embedded in the article if you follow the QR code, lah. Okay, so apparently, from what the chart says, inclusivity is becoming key. It's 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 getting heightened up, right? So inclusivity, and all uh, are uh, what uh, older and seeking uh, employment or career changes. Apparently, it's getting more important. Okay, and then as far as outlook across all, all four sectors, the, in the space that Lionel and I play, we are in the fourth column right there, the one that's uh, squared out, right? So it's, it's, it's still a growth uh, area. Now, these are charts 
we always tell people to take this with a pinch of salt. Now, whether or not it actually occurs for you, whether or not you actually experience it, is really, we have no control over it. But this is what the charts are saying to us. Okay, right? Lena, I, I'm speeding, but feel free if you feel very compelled to say something, say something, okay? So these, these are the employees. So the financial the financial sector is, is growing uh, and it's set to grow. Uh, in terms of jobs, right? Looking to switch careers, data released by MOM shows which jobs will be in demand. Again, the web, uh, the link is there, so please feel free to take a, um, a, a shot and then go to the thing, right? Um, what we see also, IT, ICT professionals are going to be, you know, uh, in demand, and this is uh, validated by that this um, article that you're going to be reading. Business development and sales professionals also in great demand. Mm -hmm. Okay, financial mm -hmm. advisors you know, and so on and so forth, right, are going to be in great demand as well. The third one, I put it as a asterisk because it's not inside this MOM report, but it's something that we are seeing, ESG professionals. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is ESG? So big, right? So could be ESG compliance, reporting, uh, you know, CSR, or maybe, you know, data-related work within ESG. Okay, so that those are the kind of some of the hot areas that will be growing. Okay, um, you know, uh, when it comes to technology, for example, the ICD professionals, I just want to give a shout out to the flagship program that we have, the TFIP program that we run every year. Last year, we had eight tracks. Uh, this year, can't tell you much, but uh, last year, we had eight tracks. This year, is going to come back again. So if for those of you who have an inclination for tech and you want to join the bandwagon, uh, look out for our announcements when, when applications open again for 2024. This this is a really great program because it essentially takes an apple and changes it to, to a pear, right? So if you were something else and you want to transit into a, into a technologist, this is one of the ways that you can do that. Okay, so look out for, for that TFIP, Technology Finance Immersion Program. Okay, and so this is uh, almost the last slide already. What is your strategy, guys, uh, for the people who are here today? What is your strategy for this year? Your strategy for this year is to build bridges, okay? Now, take a look at this picture. You see a, a guy down there on the left cliff. You see, the, you see the right cliff, and you see a certain death in between, okay? So what you want to do is you want to build bridge from the left to the right, okay? You want to make sure that you are able to go to this other place on the other side safely, okay? What is... What is build? How do you build bridge? Well, basically, um, being good at your Fantastic Four is building bridges. Upskilling is building a bridge. Slowly, slowly, slowly get to the other side, right? And th that's basically your overall strategy that you should be focusing on this year. How do you do that? As I mentioned, this session, we talked about all of this, but we're going to break into the individual things to help you piece together those bridges, okay? So build bridges, right? And here you go, um, a, a bunch of QR codes for you. You know, if, uh, again, if you want to see a career advisor, uh, please um, write to us um, and um, uh, ask for 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 a career advisory session. We will give you the earliest possible slot we can, uh, and we look forward to working with you one to one on your individual issues or situations. Uh, okay. So mm -hmm. this one, I hope you took a picture of this. The next one also, um, you know, we are our social channels. The Telegram channel, the email, the middle one is basically the events, um, basically what what's up and coming, uh, in our calendar lah, Okay, and at this juncture, Lino, I want you to come up because Lino is the man of the month. He's going to be running these two sessions, this month, this month, right? This month, right? Yeah, you want to say say, say a couple of things. Um, man of the month. <laughs> yeah, this. So basically, the one on the 18th is we're going to talk to one of our IBF fellows uh, on uh, AI and data and to mm. see what is the space and how, in, in which is the, the hottest things right now, on uh, how AI is going to affect all these uh, things. And I'm going to have a very casual conversation with one of our IBF fellows who is a subject uh, expert in the data analytics. As for the other event, it's an in-person event and um, uh, it's limited space, really limited space because Physically, yeah, we cannot really house. Limited. We cannot yeah. house. Cannot promise that you get in now, okay? Cannot yeah, promise you get in, but just that there's awareness of the stuff that we do. Yeah. 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 So because remember, we talk about self, 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 and this is one way that we hope we can help someone to develop, you know, what is self awareness. Because, you know, we talk, we spend a lot of time doing it, and you and you notice that self is connected to all four of the fantastic four, right? Whether it comes to doing research, whether it comes to your interview, your networking, and you know, your resume, uh, self comes into the picture. And 
if you were to Google self-awareness, you'll find a lot of articles talking about how self-awareness is going to help you in your employability, in your job search, in being memorable, and all those things that we talk about. Uh, so we're going to ask one of our uh, corporate banking expert to talk about how she used this uh, skill. As I say, it's a learned skill. Being self-aware is a skill. How she learned using this skill to be successful in her career journey. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So again, give the um can't guarantee that you get into the physical event, which is on the right with Dawn. Yeah. But uh, at least gives you a flavor of the stuff that we're doing uh for mm -hmm. for for the benefit of you guys, uh, who need it. Huh? Okay. So the last one is thank you. But at this juncture, before we answer some questions, uh, Lisa, can I trouble you to launch the survey? Now, for the people who are who know us, we always launch this survey because it's very valuable to us to understand your feedback and how you felt this session went. Was it valuable to you? Was it useful to you? You know, what sort of what sort of other things would you like to see? Now, this survey will literally take you less than a minute, but it will mean a world to us, okay? Um, so please uh, give us some feedback on, um, on, on, on how we did today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, in the meantime, let us uh, look at some of the questions. And um, uh, it's already five minutes to four. So maybe, I don't know, I know, I don't know whether you have time, but maybe we can... We can spend a bit more time to uh, a bit extra time to answer some questions. Not all, but sure, okay, sure. La. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, you let me see. Yeah, uh, you want to read? You want to read up? Uh? Okay. Oh dear, uh, so many. Yeah. Uh. How, how? so many? Yes. <laughs> you, you said, yeah. Okay, and we said. Uh, and also, the question could be very personalized, so we may not want to take it. Uh, the key thing is make it a problem to see us then so that we can settle it. Uh, well, it sounds so bad, settle it. We can. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we, we can. Um, you know. You know, learn more about you, right? So that we can uh, 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 come up with a, a solution to what is uh, ailing, ailing your job search. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, gosh, I don't even know where to start. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see whether I can visually group everything to, you know, to, to, to get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, um, do you have a calendar of your deep dive session? Uh, hang on a second. I'm interested in how the network properly. So, uh, we are actually constructing it. Uh, thank you for answering the question. We are actually constructing that, that calendar right now because we need to know who's available and, and so on and so forth. So, I think the only thing is that, you know, get a, get yourself on the mailing list, right? And then uh, you will be notified um, when we launch this session. And you have plenty of time to to, to sign up because we, we, we give uh, everybody like a two or two plus week sort of like uh, signing up period. Uh, mm. So, thank you for, th for answering that one, right? Um, uh, okay, uh, Thomas, thanks for answering uh, answer the question. Uh, Lino, uh, Thomas is asking, do you accept the CV with a few column, a few column co format to compress to a one page CV? Don't, don't exactly know what you uh, like, uh, left okay, column, uh, or right column. I right? think they, they, they mean you, they don't. Okay, when it comes to column, if you happen to pass this CV to a human being, no problem. You may have some problem if it's going to go through an ATS because that space between the column, sometimes the ATS cannot pick it up. So they're going to just read across and it becomes, doesn't make sense to them. So that's the danger about uh, using a column. Resume. Yeah, and, and, and also a column uh, represents, to me, if I visualize it well, left column, right column, um, there's going to yeah. be a lot of empty space. And for me, I think the the A4 size real estate uh, is very precious. So uh, that's for that reason, I don't really like columns because it it's it's you're losing space, you know, you're you're losing space. So I prefer a more traditional format. And in addition to what Lionel has uh, has mentioned, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Sean, thanks so much for answering uh, asking the question. How do we tailor our resume for each job application? Well, uh, I guess the first thing that the easiest way to say it would be to look at the um, the job description, right? And then uh, they're asking. I, we're looking for people who are A, B, C, and D, right? And then obviously the first thing you ask yourself is, do I have A, B, C, and D? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Am I A, B, C, D? <laughs> Where have I demonstrated A, B, C, D? Okay, I've demonstrated A, take a pencil and paper. I've demonstrated A in chika, 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 this job, B in this job. Those becomes the basis of your resume mm -hmm. or the version of the resume that you want to submit, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at JD, you got to be honest with yourself. I can do or not, or I have no experience whatsoever. You know what I mean? If if you are like well, seven out of the, seven out of the ten stuff I can do, okay, great. Hang on to that feeling and sort of like type it or write it down. Why, why do I say that? And then that becomes the, the basis of the resume. So I'm just gonna hopefully leave it as that. Uh, again, you know, work with one of us and then we can see what specific issues you might be having. Huh? Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, okay. Some of them are just statements. Um. 
Okay, Lionel, if you see anything interesting, just, just go. Um, okay, uh, how about this one? What do we do to maintain good relationships for work-life balance? Okay, um, how do you maintain a good life relationship? Okay, um, I... That's I, what I, I will probably do. Start a running club. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, Maybe, yeah, that's a social thing. But if you talk about work-life balance, right, then basically if you want to be afforded work-life balance or you want your bosses to be understanding about your other work commitments, then make sure that you compensate somewhat in terms of delivering things mm. on time. Maybe, mm. you know, do a bit of overtime when you can and make sure that you are, you have a reputation of delivering what you promise to deliver within mm. time, that you're not a problem and so on. So you're not extra weight. And in, in and I suppose for, for good bosses, right, good managers, right, they will, to the best of their ability, uh, reciprocate in, in terms of um, making sure that you have your other stuff um, um, well taken care of. Because, you know, if, if your mind is, is, is at peace with the home stuff, you'll be a more productive employee, I, I feel, um, uh, if, if you can be supportive. So I hope that that is, um, that is uh, helpful. Um, okay. Uh, let me see. Shortlisting jobs apply. For... Okay, uh, this one is uh, like what we talked about. Shortlisting jobs to apply. There's no perfect match. If half the job responsibilities match my res my interests, should I still apply or take or take on the role or aim for a role with seventy percent before I consider a role? If there's fifty percent, um, I would I I personally would apply already, and I would try to maximize, uh, the 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 transferability of those fifty percent, right? But at the same time, when I do so, I'm I I. Obviously, I hope I get called, but it, but if I do get called, right, then mentally I'll probably be prepared that the role may not turn out to be in the same level or iteration that it was uh, first advertised. Like for example, they're asking for a very senior person, but they only have fifty percent. But maybe maybe they want to talk to you because they can't find anyone, but they can't make it at that level. So I need to make sure that my expectations are managed that it might be a lower level, and I should be okay with that, lah. You know what I mean? So if it's fifty percent, if you are only fifty percent of the person that you're looking for, then you should. Uh, in theory, be accepting to a bit of a, uh, you know, negotiation in terms of what the, where this role ends up. So hopefully that that sort of uh, answers your question. Um, I think the other thing that is yeah. more important is, is that, you know, you you want to match, but the other thing that we always cautious is, you know, some some people are strong in things that they don't like to do, and so if you're going to emphasize on those things, um you know, you've got to be careful because you're going to end up not liking the job at all. So mm. that's what I'm just, that's what I mean. I mean, like, you're, you're, you're sabotaging yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. You yeah. Know? So so yeah. You, that's why self is, is very important. You've got to be self-aware, you know. It just happened that maybe you're good at doing this, but you've got to ask yourself, if you're going to apply for this role and a lot of time you're going to do this thing, is this something that you, you want to do it again? And know changing the environment is not going to help. Changing the boss is not going to help because the job asks you to do all these things. So mm -hmm. be very self-aware about all these things before you, you start saying, oh, I match, I match, I match. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Um, yeah, I mean, that's true. And then uh, someone, this is an easy question. How do you register for IBF Career Advisor? Uh, thank, thank you for your interest. I just moved to the slide where you can actually write to us. So scan yeah. the QR code, yeah? So hope to see, you know, many of you. And then there's one question actually that asks about uh, um, uh, Kosi. Uh, is having a coach with WSG going to prevent me from having a coach with IBF Connect? No. I understand there's there's there's, there's no uh, there's no, no uh, there's no prevention. So feel free to come uh, to us. In fact, many um, we we get quite a few referrals from WSG E2 as well. So happy to work with you um, and give you a different perspective or more targeted uh, intervention if you need one. So thank thank you, uh, Kosi, for asking asking that question. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, the rest of them are just kind of like statements, I suppose. Uh, and there are quite a quite a few of them. Um, okay, so it's four o three already. But no, do you do you think that we should take a couple more? Should do you think we should just maybe? Okay, for those of you who have something on, feel free. We don't feel. Oh, insulted. I think I think they did it already because we we we, we lost. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah but I mean that 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 goes. I mean, if you if you want to okay. go, go, yeah, okay, I mean, so think maybe yeah, two yeah. Or three that, more? Yeah. That, that, yeah, sure. I mean, like maybe a couple more lah. So there's this one person that asked uh, tips for ChatGPT. Okay, so I'm I like for myself, I play with it a lot. So I don't have any like rule book. I I just try to communicate with it like almost like a human being, right? But I found out that you really have to give it very very specific instructions. And so for the people who are here, thank you for staying for so long. I told you about my 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 sort of like uh my 
encounter with ChatGPT, right? So basically, right, um, the graphics I wanted to reveal to you that you saw today were all generated by ChatGPT, right? So I, I worked in harmony with it. So basically, right, you, you saw this slide. I asked ChatGPT, please draw me a picture of a man standing on one side of the cliff uh, with the other side of the cliff and a chasm in between. And, it, and ChatGPT4 generated this image. So that's how I guess I, I talk to the to the system. I tell it very specific thing. If I don't like what it generated, I will say, uh, uh, please generate another one. Because the first the first picture that they generated was the man on the right. I don't I don't I don't know why my orientation is left to right, not right to left. So I say please generate again with the man on the left. So the, they did this one for me lah. And you also notice right, the all these icons like you know like the networking and the interview icons they were all generated by ChatGPT four. So I just wanted to share with you guys, that's how I've been using it and playing with the system, lah, right? Uh, and yeah, so if you want to talk to the system, ask, just ask it a question, but very, be, be very, very specific with what you want to know and the details that you want it to provide. So that's, uh, that's uh, my advice, right? Okay. Um, oh, hi, Hui Hua. Uh, so Hui Hua is asking, should we ask for face-to-face -face, uh, instead of online interview? Um, Okay, so uh, Lionel may have a different opinion, but for me, I would align myself to what is offered to me. So yes. if, it says, if it's online, I would just say, oh, thank you very much. I would be very happy to do an online thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, if it's face-to-face, uh, -face, then oh, great. Lah. Each of them have its own uh, challenges, uh, like what we mentioned, but I think that uh, if you should just accept what you're offered. Lah, because they will have to choose what's uh, convenient for themselves and their line managers, yeah, given the schedule, but also accommodating you as well. Lah. So hopefully that helps. Um, okay, and I think that, uh, let me see, I want to live life to the fullest, not be, well, this is a statement, I, we totally agree, we all want to live life to the fullest, enjoy, enjoy what we do, and so on and so forth, right, so, definitely with you, brother. Um, and let me see, it's asking about OT, culture, root, so, uh, Iman is, uh, it's asking about overtime, culture, root, not rude, uh, la. It's it's not, not rude. rude. It's not you, you, you know, you must have give them a reason why you're asking this question. Like, you know, give some context to why you're asking it. Because if you were to just ask like that, um, people always think the negative of you, right? So yeah, oh, this guy's yeah. lazy, this guy's not gonna put his worth. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean it's not a rude question, it's just something that you probably don't want to ask uh ever. <laughs> You know, like, uh, it's, you know, like what we mentioned just now, like, you know, like uh, we were talking about, you know, first impressions last a long time, you're dressing and so on and so forth. Yeah. I think to a certain extent, these kind of questions last a very, very long time. I mean, especially... you have a good reason. Okay, yeah. for example, uh, you need yeah. to care for your elderly parents and you need to be at home at a certain time. Yeah. It's fair to ask them, you know, so that, yeah. that that's fine. I mean, let's have a good reason. Give them a reason why you're asking this question. Right. Yeah, and yeah, but at the same time, you know, if you do have those circumstances, please understand that if, if you are honest and telling them about that, you you may very well lose the job. Just not, yeah. not because you of could, anything you personal. Could lose the job because yeah. it could be yeah. certain because jobs. They need is, someone. Yeah. 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 Those certain jobs. I mean, that's why the research comes in, I guess. You have to find out for this type of role, mm. you know, how how much time is, is being, you know, talk to the people that are doing this role, find out. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Because you you don't want to go to the road to the and realize that oh no this job does require a lot of OT uh, you just wasted not only yeah, their time yeah, you wasted yeah. your own time so do, do yeah. your research find out whether this type so good for certain type of role for sure I mean if you want to go for a retail role for sure you have to work during uh, public holidays Yes, yes. So, so hopefully that kind of answers the question. I think at this juncture, I think the, the only fair thing to do is just to say, thanks so much, everybody, for attending. We're losing people already. So I think, you know, sorry yeah. to hold you up so long. Um, thank you for spending so much time with us. Uh, again, we stand ready to help you. Um, just not just me and Lionel, but there's uh, other colleagues as well, other career advisors as well. Mm -hmm. We'll try to take care of you the best that we can and journey with you to a happy ending, lah, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, until you say I don't want to see your face anymore, whatever yeah. it is. But we'll but try to journey us. with you for as long <laughs> as possible. Okay. Um, and work with you on your issues on a one-to-one -one basis, lah. So I'm so sorry that we couldn't answer the remaining, I don't know, almost 20 questions, but um uh we, as I said, we can take this offline and then we take it. We'll work with you one, uh, one, one on one. Huh? So hopefully, Lionel and I will hope to see many of you, some of you, a few of you uh, in, the, in the weeks to come. And uh, we will try our very, very best to, um, to help you. Just remember, 
uh, when you come and see us, we may not tell you what you want to hear, but we'll tell you what we feel you need to hear. So if we have that kind of, a, yeah, if we have that, if we have that kind of thing, I think we have a very good relationship. So uh, you have an objective kind of like, I mean, I wouldn't say friend, but maybe friend, but you have an objective for a sounding board, lah, you know, to help you with the blind spot. So that's our value to you. And that's our promise and commitment to you. So um, thank you again uh, uh, for, for your thing. And thank you so much for doing the, um, for the, the poll to, uh, for us. I uh, really, really appreciate it. And then, you know, again, finally, please look out for our calendar for our next events um, because we're going to go and deep dive into the Fantastic Four and other things as well, right? So that's it. Lionel, any last words? Um, hanging there, if, for those of you who didn't have a 2023, we hope that 2024 will be a good good, yeah. good uh, start for you. Um, so, yeah, work with us. We will try our best to help you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so all the best, guys. Uh, have a wonderful 2024. Right mindset as you go through the year. Positivity attracts positivity. And uh, all the best. We're here to help you. Uh, mm. And uh, we'll see you around. Take care. Yeah. Cheers. Bye.